Welcome to a new series I'm starting. As you would have read in the title, this account is an extreme collection log account. The basics of the account is I pick a collection log to work on and I have to stay and do that activity until I complete it before I can move on. This account has many different and interesting paths to take and will really make my journey through old school RuneScape unique. I will be doing forgotten or dead content or even doing some new content to progress my account. The rules for my account are, I can only work on one collection log at a time until it is greened slash completed, but I can go back and do any collection logs I have greened while working on another log. If an item is on two different logs, for example, an Onyx is on Scotizo's drop table and Zolrus. That means I won't have to kill that boss next because sometimes it's just unavoidable in some cases. Collection logs such as all pets, skilling pets, miscellaneous, all clue scroll logs and random events will be worked on passively and can be done while doing my other grinds. This is due to items such as the long or curved bones since they are in the miscellaneous tab and can just be obtained at any point from any monsters. The pets being included in the boss's log and the pet's log or them just being obtained by random skilling can't be helped. I can train my gathering skills, for example, woodcutting, outside of my collection log activity, but the items must be dropped. My processing skills like crafting or herb law must solely be trained through collection log activities or their loot. I will not be able to use item spawns, receive free items from NPCs or buy from shops, but I can buy all tools from shops and pick up tools at the current collection log activity. For example, I could take an ax from the crates at Wintertot if it was the current activity I was locked to or had already been completed. The exceptions for my account are that I can buy a house. I need a house for construction and there's just no other way besides buying one, so I just have to do that. I can get items or other requirements for quests in any way. This includes buying from shops, picking up items, killing other monsters to collect their loot, and doing tasks to get favor. This is because quests lock behind way too much content and way too many collection logs. I can also keep the quest rewards. I can also buy anything from Slayer shops, and this is because my goal of the account. I can only start using the Slayer shop when I am working on the Slayer collection log. And speaking of the goal of my account, the overall goal of my account is to complete the Slayer collection log. If you have any other questions about the account, just make sure you ask in the comments and I'll reply to all of them. With all that out of the way, let's get into the video. Just before we get into the video, a word from today's sponsor, HelloFresh. Look, I'm no chef, but HelloFresh really makes cooking meals fast and easy. And the peppercorn chicken meal I'm cooking in the background tasted so good by the time I was done. I've had HelloFresh many times before and I truly do love it for its amazing taste and the time it saves. Here are some of the things I think you guys will like about it too. HelloFresh's step-by-step -step recipes really help with cutting back cooking time and makes it a stress-free experience. With HelloFresh cutting back a time spent in the kitchen with meals ready in around 30 minutes with foolproof step-by-step -step instructions. Trust me, they are pretty foolproof if even I can actually follow them easily. HelloFresh is also up to 72% cheaper than dining at a restaurant or grocery shopping according to a survey done. With many new recipes added and a constantly changing list of meals to get, I think that HelloFresh can really be good for anyone. If HelloFresh sounds like it would be good for you, use my link or go to hellofresh.com and use code POGZZSEP16 for 16 free meals across 7 boxes plus 3 surprise gifts. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. Once again, thank you HelloFresh for sponsoring. I decided to make the account a hardcore Iron Man just because I wanted to see how far I could get as a hardcore, and if I do die, the series will continue on just as a normal Iron Man. There is Tutorial Island done. Now it's time for me to drop all the items I've gotten from Tutorial Island since they didn't come from an activity where I could get a collection log. I am just going to keep the bread, bucket, and pot because I will need these for a quest and I can obtain these items for quests in any way. I will also be dropping my tools since I am not allowed free items and I will just have to rebuy them from shops because I am able to purchase tools or items needed for training from shops. The first plan I have for the account is to do some quests to get started and get myself some tools so I can start at the first place that I want to grind out. And there is Cook's Assistant completed. Just wanted the quest point for later. Now I'm going to go and complete Ernest the Chicken for some money. There is Ernest the Chicken completed, and I have gotten my first money in the account. So now I'll be able to buy tools that I'll need for future activities. Now it's time to go complete another quest for some more GP, and that will be Pirate's Treasure. 
It was a much easier fight against this farmer than I thought it would be, but there is quest done. Now I get 450 coins from this casket, plus an emerald and a gold ring. So it's time to move on to the next quest, which is goblin diplomacy. I just have to go and collect the ingredients for the dyes first. There is the die made, so now it's time to go and collect the goblin mail. Goblin mail one, number two, and number three. Time to finish the quest. Quest completed, time to do my next quest, which is Romeo and Juliet. That's Romeo and Juliet completed. I just completed the last two quests just for their quest points, but now it's time for me to go and train up my fishing a little so I can actually start my first collection log activity. And there is the net bought. Remember that I am allowed to buy my tools from shops, but I can't purchase something like the bait from the shop due to my rules. Finally, there is 15 fishing. I forgot how long it takes to actually hit 15 fishing when doing it with shrimps and not through quest XP. Anyway, it's time to go grab a couple items I need for my first collection log activity and go move on to that. Just needed to grab myself an axe from Bob's shop and a hammer. Now it's time to move off to my first collection log activity and I'll be locked too. The first activity I picked to lock myself to was Fishing Trawler. This is due to Fishing Trawler only having a 15 fishing requirement and is the easiest way for me to get some early game food. The minigame is very simple. There are a few different ways to earn points here. What I'll be doing is, after the game starts, I'll be going up to the top deck and chopping the Kraken when it attacks the boat. On a successful hit, you get 5 woodcutting XP and 10 contribution points. After that, you can repair the rail for a further 10 contribution points but you can fail both of these things, so you could end up with none. Then you just wait for about a minute for it to attack the other side and repeat this till you get 50 contribution points. So then, at the end of the game, you'll be able to search the nets for your reward. The collection log items for this activity is the Angler's Outfit. The outfit increases your fishing experience by 2.5% when worn. I will also be getting some low-level fish, which will be my best source of food for a little while. So to complete this collection log, I will need to get the four angler pieces to finish the outfit, then I'll be able to move on. But for now, I am officially locked to the fishing trawler. So I've been looking into the quest a bit more and I've decided to do Shield of Arav because I can get 600 coins from completing it. I want the 600 coins so I will be able to get enough money to buy a house because at the fishing trawler, you can train construction when you fix the broken rails that the Kraken destroys. So I'm just going to go quickly finish that quest. There is Shield of Arrow completed. Now I'll be able to go and buy a house with this GP plus the rest I have in my bank. There we go. There's my house. Like all Snowflake Iron Man, it's just an exception that has to be made. After that, I went over and bought myself a saw instead of picking one up because my rules state that I have to buy an item instead of picking it up. Anyway, it's time to move back to Fishing Trawler and now I'll be able to get some Construction XP. The Construction XP is only 5 XP per fix, which is the same as the Woodcutting XP, which isn't much, but it should be some nice passive XP through this grind, just like the Woodcutting, since I already have 8 Woodcutting just from this. Oh my god, there we go. That's the first item I've gotten on here. That's the angler boots done. Um, That was not too bad. I didn't kind of expect to get anything on that time because it has been 19 fishing trawlers. So for a 1 in 12, not too bad to get them at 19. I'll go put them on because that's my first piece of the set that I have. But yeah, this is the loot, what it's looking like so far. So I've got a lot of raw anchovies, sardines, and shrimps. So there'll be a lot of cooking XP when I can actually cook them. I forgot I can't even put them on yet because I need 34 fishing. So they're just going to have to sit in the bank until then. But That'll be nice for the future, at least. Oh, there's the second piece of the angler set already. That was quick. That wasn't like a three more or something after the last one. So only two more pieces left and 16 fishing. Um, I also started using a bailing bucket earlier. I didn't really talk about this, but sometimes on the earlier levels with like when my wood cutting was level one, I was not getting enough points to finish this because you need 50 points to be able to get the items from there. And just, yeah, with one wood cutting just was not happening. So I had to grab one of the bailing buckets, which I didn't even actually know was stocked on here. So this is a good example of my rule where I can only grab items that are inside of my current collection log activity because this isn't classified as a tool because it's a bailing bucket. But, so I couldn't have bought this from a shop, but since it was on the activity, I could get it, which is great. Oh, wow. These were back to back. What the fuck? I didn't actually expect to get anything. Um, Okay, they're really coming in now. I've only got one left now, and that's 17 fishing too. You must get more fishing when you actually get one of the pieces. I think that's how that works. But yeah, that's that was fast. That was literally back to back from the last one. So hopefully I can get the next one. I don't even need the next one quick. I was just kind of really enjoying how AFK nice this was. All right, let's go for the back to back to back then. Oh, I thought I got it then, but the old boot baited me. Well, that's 34 fishing. I still haven't finished the um set yet, but this means I can now actually wear the set. So yeah, I can now wear Angler's outfit. I'm still one piece off. I've done 50... Oh, 66. Never mind. Um, 
I kind of got distracted. Uh, the drop rate for getting all the pieces was uh, 50 fishing trawlers. So that's a one in 12 for all of them. So I still haven't hit that yet, but well, no, I have hit that. I should have hit the drop rate for it, but at least I can wear these pieces that I currently have. So I can actually get the first bit of clothing that I have on this account. There we go. It's looking good. Just need the um, top now. Hopefully wearing these pieces will make it a bit more luckier for me. Oh, there we go. There's the final item that I needed. Okay, now I'm done here. This was not long after the last thing at all. What was I at? 66. I'm at 72 now, so isn't too bad. But yeah, that's. I'm glad I'm done and 35 fishing to finish it off. Now I can uh, start trying to move on to my next actual uh, collection log activity. But yeah, that's the full angle is completed. And I'll have a look at the collection log because that's the first thing we're fully completed in the collection log too. Fishing trawler. There we go. That's our first green log. The one that we've actually worked on and completed. So time to move on to the next one. And to move on to the next one, I need to go to a quest. So I'm going to go to a quest real quick. After that, I can move on to my next collection log activity. Just before I start the quest, I just had to buy a knife and a pickaxe. I need 10 mining to mine the pillar. Oh, wait. This is mentioned somewhere. Um, yeah, I can't defeat this guardian right now. So I'm just going to go get 10 mining and come back real quick. There is 10 mining. Now it's time to head back and finish the quest. There we go. Now, as you might've guessed, my next collection log activity is the Camdozel collection log. Let's talk about the ruins of Camdozel a bit because this content was kind of dead on arrival. The Ruins of Camdozel is a free to play area which has 10 collection log items. You can actually do a fair few different things here. You are able to do fishing and train cooking as well as prayer with it, mining and smithing with smashing the deposits you get, and you can also train combat through the different kinds of unique golems here. What I'll be starting with is fishing since I want to do the most AFK activity first even though it will result in less Baronite Shards. Baronite Shards are basically the currency in here and can be exchanged for buffs in Camdozel. You are able to get buffs such as an increase in fish caught, fish prepared, which is the cooking part, and an increase in the chance of lucky drops and a few other buffs. You can fish with a small net or a big net here, and I've decided to start with a small net. That is because with a big net, I'll only be able to catch the last two types of fish which I can't prepare right now because I need a higher cooking level and I only have a cooking level of 22 after cooking some of the food from the fishing trawler. I need a cooking level of 33 to cook the second best fish and a cooking level of 46 for the last fish. So this is going to be my activity to collect some Baronite Shards to unlock the buffs. But now we are officially locked to the Cam Dozel collection log. I've decided that I'm just gonna leave here for a sec to go and cook the rest of my food I got from the fishing trawler because I keep having to drop a bunch of the tetra fish, which is the second best fish here. I need 33 cooking to prepare them and I have about 400 something anchovies in my bank. So I'll go and cook them and see what level I get to. Just about to finish up cooking the last of the anchovies and I got a beekeeper random event and got my first collection log item in the random events section. I am able to do this because in my rules, I am allowed to do random events and work on that collection log passage. I finished up the anchovies and got to halfway through level 32 cooking, which is great because my goal was 33 cooking for the fish. While I was out here cooking the food, I thought I might as well go buy a big fishing net from the fishing shop. Now it's back to Camdozel to keep fishing, and when I hit 33 cooking, I'll swap to using the big net. There is 33 cooking. Now I'll be able to prepare the tetra, which will give me more cooking XP and more prayer XP too. So far, the first fish gives four prayer XP, the cave eels give me seven, and now the tetra gives me 10 XP. I'll swap over to using a big fishing net now to only catch the tetra, which should speed up the XP an hour in all skills. And when I reach 46 fishing and cooking, I will be able to catch and prepare the last fish, which is the catfish. There is the Baronite Mace handle. Didn't take too long to get, but this is the first piece to the mace and the first collection log to the ruins of Camdozel. This is the only piece I can get from fishing. I can get one mace part from the golems and the rest of the collection log comes from mining and using the Baronite deposits. So now I'm just gonna keep fishing here and build up my Baronite shards to unlock some upgrades to make this faster. Just got my first clue bottle while fishing. I'm gonna try and complete this first clue scroll on the account and hopefully get a weapon or some armor upgrade for it. First step completed. Okay, that's a Charlie step. I can't complete any Charlie steps right now, so I just have to drop it. Got another beginner clue very fast after the last one, so I'm trying to do this again. Hey, there we go. That's the first beginner clue on the account. Let's see if we can actually get anything from this clue for the first one. I'm just gonna hope for probably like an easy weapon or like easy armor upgrade just for obviously uh killing the chaos golems when I get up to that soon so let's see what we get that's actually a very good uh clue to be honest sardines don't matter I've already got them having a staff is great obviously air staff's the best but uh, having a one 
completed one beginner clue for a fire staff. Sick. And that is actually an armor upgrade because I, I think I can wear hard leather body. No, 10, 10 defense. But then I can wear a hard leather body at 10 defense, which is, it's good. It's some armor. So I can't complain at that clue at all, especially for the first one when you could just get shit all and get 10 cabbages or something. But oh, well, back to the mines now. You might see that I have 1,800 Baronite shards in my inventory and another mace handle. Now, just let me go to my bank and show you something. I have 11 mace handles in my bank from fishing. I'm able to turn these in for 100 shards each. But first, I have a beginner clue casket I want to open. So let's do that. Oh my god, I just got a shoulder parrot. There is no way I just got that in my second clue. I really was not expecting to get that, but that is fashion scape, I suppose. Anyway, I'm going to turn these mace handles in to get 1,200 baronite shards for it. With my 3,000 baronite shards, I'm able to purchase the 5% chance to increase the lucky drops over the whole of Camdozel. I decided on this perk over the others because I'm unsure of how they actually fully work. As you might imagine, there isn't that much information about these things. I was debating between the luck perk or the 10% increase to catching fish, but this brought up the question of if it only affects catching fish. If I get a 10% increase to catching fish, this would mean that it would decrease the amount of Baronite shards I get and would decrease the amount of mace handles I get potentially. But if it was a 10% increase to catching anything, then it would be better than the 5% luck boost because I am going to keep fishing. Anyway, there is the purchase of the perk and now it's time to get back to fishing. Next will be the 10% increase to catching fish. With the increase in luck, it should be quicker to get to the next perk now. There we are. I got enough shards again to buy the next perk. I managed to get 15 mace handles this time, which is much more than before the 5% luck increase. Anyway, now it's time to buy the 10% increase in fish catching rate. Now that I have that unlocked, I'm going to get back to fishing and work towards unlocking the next perk, which will be the 10% increase to preparing fish. Oh yeah, I did also open up a beginner clue scroll before and got a black plate skirt so that'll be my best in slot armor as well and there's 46 fishing a bit of a random level but this unlocks me the last fish i can catch here and that is catfish i still can't prepare them because my cooking level is only 44 and i need the same level as fishing i did also just fish up an easy clue bottle so i'm gonna go see if this clue is completable oh, wow okay that was only a two-step clue let's open and see what we get okay a black full helm and a battle axe is nice too bad there wasn't any collection logs though the best thing in this clue is 100 all that money since my next grind will be mining after the fishing grind i'll now be able to purchase a really good pickaxe i thought i was gonna have to be stuck on a steel pickaxe but now i can get all the way up to an adamant and there's 46 cooking. I swap back to a small net to hit this level, so I'll go swap back to the big net now, and then I can prepare the catfish. I am also now sure that after I unlock the 10% fish catch rate, it only increased the fish rate and negatively affected the rate of baronite shards and mace handles, because this is going a heap slower now. There we go. There is 37 prayer just from fishing these fish. That means it's unlocked me protect from magic. This prayer won't be useful for a long time, but at least it's good to have. So as you might see in my inventory, I have enough baronite shards now to get my next upgrade. So now I'm able to get a 10% increase when I'm preparing my fish. I also have a few things to open. As you can see, I've got two beginner caskets and two easy caskets and a mystery box. I just saved them all for the whole time I was getting these shards. So this is just what I got from between last upgrade to this upgrade. So I'll start with the mystery box first. Obviously hoping for a good weapon like Mithril Scimitar. It's the only one I can get from this or the Stale Baguette, which would be a good collection log. Uh, 500 coins. That's not bad. I do really want coins. I was going to say from these caskets, I don't know if I can get much coins from beginners, but I do really want some more coins because I'm very close to being able to get a rune pickaxe with the money I have. So that will speed up the mining grind. So let's see what I get from these. Oh my God. I actually just got the mole slippers. What the hell is happening on this account? Oh my God, look at them. I fucking, I love the, mil the mole slippers. I love them so much. I can't believe I've got a shoulder parrot and mole slippers in four beginner clues. Okay, all right, next beginner then. Your 25 fire runes. That's kind of what you more expect from this, not 500k in the other one I got that was like 300k for a shoulder parrot. Uh, let's see what we get from the two easy clues then. Uh, three fire lighters, 10 trout. Uh, that's a very, very poor clue. But hey, at least there was a collection log. That's all I can really ask for from these. All right, we'll see if we get anything from the last easy clue. Man, that is bad. Uh, it's bad as well because I already have a black full helm. So yeah, that's not the best. But I'll chuck all this stuff back in now. But yeah, the mole slippers are great. When I'm not fishing, I'm 100% going to be wearing them for my fashion scape. But anyway, let's go use all these shards now and go unlock the last thing that I need from Romero. So let's exchange and we'll get the preparation buff. 
that's going to give us a permanent 10% buff to our chance of repairing fish here. So now I'm going to get more prayer XP for the last few 2,500 shards I'm going to get, which is going to take so long because damn it's slow to get it because of this buff. There we go. That's bought. Hopefully I can hit 43 prayer before I get enough shards for the mining perk, but we'll just have to see. There we are. Just completed a random event and got myself another collection log. So I got myself the letter hose on top. Now I have how many collection logs am I at? I'm at 10 collection logs from that one. For all the time that I've been here, that's been the only random event that I've gotten that could actually get me a collection log slot. But yeah, good to have another collection log while I'm sitting here. Um, hasn't been that long since I got the last of the baronite shards as you can see i've only increased up to that many so yeah let's chuck that one in but i did have another beginner clue and we'll open that soon well i don't have to worry about 43 prayer because there it is now i can use protect from melee which will massively help me out when i go kill the golems since i won't have to flinch them i'll just be able to attack them with protection prayers on now you might see in my inventory that i have a bunch of mace handles which are worth 100 shards each so this will be my last inventory of fish. I will go hand these in now and buy the mining perk. And it's time to move on to a different activity in here. And that is mining. It has taken me two days and eight hours of playtime to finish up fishing here. Now I have a 10% increased chance to mine, which will be a massive help to speeding up the mining in here since so many of the collection log slots are locked behind mining. Now let's go and mine in here for the first time. Never mind. It turns out I can't mine yet because I need 14 mining. So let's just go train that up first. Something I nearly forgot about was all these caskets I got from fishing. So let's open these first and see if I get anything. Wow, okay, that was a very quick collection log. I don't know what it is with Sandwich Lady Bottoms, but that's another one I've got on this account. Anyway, I got the other one on my boss locked account. Let's keep opening these. Oh, Air Staff is very nice. And Wizard Robe, that's not bad actually, to be honest. I have got a lot of uniques from these clues. Completed 10 and I've got three uniques from it already. That's insane. Okay, now I'm going to go train up my mining. There's 14 mining. Now let's mine some baronite. And there is the first baronite deposit. This is what I crushed to get all the other uniques from here, except for the mace guard that comes from the golems. Completed that zombie random event for another collection log slot, which is the zombie mask. Just got a full bag of baronite deposits, but I can't break them open just yet because that requires 14 smithing. So I am going to go do a quest to train my smithing. And I think we all know what that quest is going to be. I am doing knight sword because this quest will get me closer to 30 smithing straight away. Now, also remember in my rules that I state that I can do all quests and get the item for them in any way. So I have just collected all these items to finish the quest with. Nearly managed to die to an ice warrior, but I managed to save spot it and mine the blurite that was needed. And there is the quest completed and 29 smithing from that. It's time to go back and smash some deposits. There's the first collection log from the deposits. There are one in 300, so getting one from the first inventory is great. Okay, and the mace head from the first inventory. That is a one in 350 chance. I do have the 5% luck increase perk, so they are a bit more common, but great to see two collection log slots in the first inventory. And there's an Imkando hammer. It didn't pop up with a collection log now because I just have to fix it for the collection log to actually show up. Okay, really didn't expect that. Why did I just get two of them in one inventory? Anyway, let me fix one up and sell one back for shards. There's the hammer repaired and another collection slot acquired. A few inventories later, there is the ancient globe. Now, if I look in the collection log, I only need three more items from mining and one from the golems being the last part of the mace. Next inventory, I get the Astroscope. I only need two more items to finish the collection log. And there's another Ancient Globe. I was going really well getting constant uniques, so let's see how long these last two will take. There's one of the last two uniques I need from mining. Now I only need one more to move on to killing the golems for the last mace piece and move on to the next collection log activity after this. Ancient Ledger obtained, and that means I have finished mining here and it's time to move on to killing the golems and training my combat stats up. I will just go to my bank and show all the items I got from my mining grind. So I have ended up with a few extra ancient pieces and a stack of 7,200 Baronite shards. I am going to go unlock the last perk now, which is the increase of five defense levels and start working on killing the golems for the last piece of the mace. So I am just going to be using this gear and prayer flicking the golems to kill them to get my stats up. Once I get my stats higher, I can wear black armor and my black battle axe to make this just a bit faster. I am going to go and try and kill them now because I have never killed one of these golems before. I first started off in the rooms to the east of the bank chest 
and awakened the golem to find out it was a body golem that was level 50. I realized pretty quickly that I couldn't hurt it and decided to look into golems a bit more and found out that I could go south of the bank chest area and find these flawed golems. So I managed to kill one pretty easily and this is where I'll be staying until I get my combat stats up a little bit more. These golems have a 1 in 750 rate of dropping the Baronite Mace part. So I'll move on to the mine golems when I can. They have a lower level than the body golems and drop the Baronite Guard at a 1 in 500. That's 5 attack. Now I can use the steel longsword in my bank. I will also be recharging my prayer just in the monastery and coming back to keep flinching. That's 10 strength. Time to swap back to attack till that hits 10 and I'll be able to use my black battle axe. That's 10 attack done and now it's time to get 10 defense for the black armor I have. Gotta begin a clue from the golems when I was killing them. The first step was a Charlie step and I can actually do some of these steps now. I got the step to catch the pike, which is actually possible. For the fishing bait, I'm able to obtain it in the Camdozal vault when I use 750 Baronite shards to access that. After that, I can go and buy a bait fishing rod since it is a tool and I'll be able to keep the pike obtained from fishing since the bait comes from a collection log activity. But first, let me explain this vault just a little bit more. I didn't explain the Camdozal vault earlier earlier because I was unsure if I would even be using it, but here we are. The vault is like a little mini game. You pay 750 shards to enter for one minute and you have to rob the chest in here for some loot. To keep the loot, you also have to get back to the start and exit the vault yourself. There are three different types of boxes here to steal, which each have some different drops and item rates. Overall, the loot is really odd and really bad, so you wouldn't need to do this on any other account besides a restricted one. I will be going for simple lock boxes since they hold the fishing bait will be at the start of the maze. The barriers and placement of the boxes do change each time, so we'll just have to see how many I can get on each run. Okay, I got five boxes, so let's open them. Not lucky on the first few, so let's go again. I got really unlucky with the spawns that time and only got two simple, but I did manage two elaborate, so let's open them. Kind of looks like the elaborate were beginner clue rewards, but let's go back in the vault. All right, nice. Got some fishing bait and a shield, which is great since I didn't have one. All right, I'm going to go and complete this beginner clue step now. All right, let's see if this clue was worth it. No, no, it wasn't. That's 10 defense. Time to swap back to attack and strength now to train them up a bit more. So I got my stats up a bit higher, but when I was looking at them, I thought about something. I'm currently 34 smithing, and at 35, I'll be able to smith my own scimitar. A steel scimitar will be more DPS than the black battle axe, so I'm going to swap back to mining for a bit and get some baronite deposits because when you crush them, you get 30 smithing XP each. The other reason I want to do this is because I can use the extra baronite shards to enter the vault to steal some more simple lock boxes to get fishing bait to get some better food to kill these golems with. So I am going to quickly go back to mining and go and use the iron and coal I got from the vault to make a steel scimitar. There's 35 smithing. Now I can make the scimitar, so I'm just going to go and make the bars first. And there's my steel scimitar. So now, just before I go back to the golems, I'm going to run the vault a few times to get some more fishing bait so I can have better food when killing the golems. Managed to get eight boxes with 2,250 shards. So let's open these up. No fishing bait from them, but I did get feathers. So I can buy a fly fishing rod and get some salmon and trout. So after I go fish up some salmon and trout, I'll be back to kill these golems. There we go, just hit 25 strength and I have 25 attack and 20 defense now. So I think it's time to move on to the next golem and that is the Mind Golem. They have a bit higher stats, but they have a better drop table and I can get Mind Golem cores, which will be very useful for early runes on this account because they count as 11 essence, but they can only be used on the Mind Altar. They also have a higher chance of dropping the Baronite Guard, which is the only item I need to finish the collection log here. And there's base level 30s. Went back to the flawed golems for a bit because the Mind Golems were hurting really bad. Might go try them again now, and if that doesn't work, I'll just come back to the flawed Lord Golems till base 40s. There's 40 attack. Now I'll be able to wield the mace when I get the last part. I kept killing the flawed golems because after I got 30 defense, I didn't need food anymore. I just put on rapid heal and when my prayer ran out, I just went to the monastery. I am going to start training strength till 40 now 
and after that train to 40 defense and then move on to the mind golems if i haven't gotten the last piece of the baronite mace that is and there's the baronite mace guard didn't take too long because i am well below the drop rate only got to 34 strength after the last clip all that's left in the collection log is to make the mace so let's go and make that to finish off this grind. There we go. That's the Baronite Mace. And that is this log now completed. I'm so glad I got 40 attacks so I can wear this as well if all the balls don't get in the way. But yeah, there we go. Got the Mace. It's a big, big upgrade over what I had being a Steel Scimitar. So I go from plus 15 slash to getting plus 40 crush on this. So like 25 extra damage on it. And it does extra damage to Golems. I'm sure I'll put up on the screen what it does. But yeah, now that's this collection log actually completed. So... Now I'll be able to come back here and do whatever I want. So that's Cam Dozel completed and Fishing Troller completed. So now with my rules, I will be able to come back and do these activities at any time I want to because they have been greened. So I can't just start any other log, but I can come back and do this one. But yeah, it's a nice, nice time to sort of finish this one. Finished on exactly 400 total level, 23 collection logs, like slots collected because of all the clues and everything I got as well. So I got 12 beginner clues completed with three uniques in this, which was actually insane. The uniques I got, the most expensive ones and the best looking ones as well. I did three easies as well, but that was for no uniques. And I don't think I did any other clues. Yeah, I did some random events as well and got five logs. I was actually dismissing the random events a fair bit because I wasn't recording or I just wanted to AFK his account. So I didn't actually do some of them. Now I can actually move on to the next collection log that I'll be doing. But I'm not going to reveal what collection log that's going to be just yet. But we can see this is what I've got for my first episode. Next episode, I'll be completing some new collection logs and training up some new skills. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next episode. My stats, playtime, and collections logged are on the screen. So you can see what I finished up with this episode. Since this is the first episode of a new series, I'd really like to hear your feedback on this series. So make sure you like the video and write a comment about the episode or even ask a question about the account. Anyway, that's all I have to say. So I hope to see you all in the next episode.